No way. Toxic metals in baby food? Arsenic in baby rice cereal? Yes way. It's real folks and I'm going to let you in on what's going on in the world of baby food and a recent report that came out that you need to know about. So stick with me till the end. Hey everyone, I'm Jill Castle. I'm a pediatric dietitian and this is my channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I release a new show every single week and I talk about child nutrition. And this week I'm talking about toxins in baby food and a recent report that came out that tested lots of different baby foods and found heavy metals. We are talking lead, cadmium, mercury, and arsenic. Actually, seven companies were asked to submit their documentation and the reporting on testing for heavy metals in baby food. Four companies agreed to submit their information. Three companies did not. Of the four companies, Happy Baby, Earth's Best, Gerber, and Beech Nut, of those four companies with baby food analysis, it was found that these foods had heavy metals in them. And heavy metals, my friend, are not good for little babies. Definitely not for their developing brain. So you might wonder what baby foods were analyzed. Well, they looked at baby foods in jars, in pouches. They looked at things like teething biscuits and puffs. They looked at juice. They looked at baby formula and they looked at baby cereals. And as I said, they found four main heavy metals arsenic, lead, mercury, and cadmium. So let's go through what each of those are and how they can actually impact brain development. The first one is arsenic, and arsenic occurs naturally in our soil. Unfortunately, that is the case. And many of the fruits and vegetables and rice products, things that are grown in the ground, absorb this arsenic through their root system, and it ends up appearing in our food supply. Now, tiny little amounts of arsenic, although it sounds awful, tiny little amounts aren't necessarily harmful. But when the amounts accumulate or are large enough, they can impact the brain. In terms of arsenic, the brain impact can be related to the intelligence quotient or IQ. It can be related to um, memory and also language development. So again, thinking about babies and, you know, they're born with a blank slate, you know that their brains are quite a powerful little thing in their heads, but those brains grow. They grow in terms of size, but what's going on inside the brain, those neuro pathways, the connections that are being made, the senses, the language, they're hearing and learning, everything so quickly. Um, all of the development that's happening inside the brain is highly dependent on nutrition. And so we wanna make sure that the nutrition that babies are getting is safe for them. Um, arsenic, unfortunately, even small amounts can have a negative impact. So we want to understand where arsenic is and we want to be careful about the foods that we give infants, young infants in particular, um, in that first year or two of life. The second heavy metal that was found was lead and lead is a neurotoxin. In fact, it's it's probably the second most harmful neurotoxin in the brain. And if any of you have ever lived in an old house, an antique home that might have used lead paint, uh, you know that lead is a concern. I myself have always, almost always lived in old homes. And so lead paint was a big issue for my young children when they were really young. Lead is such a concern that pediatricians check for lead in the first four years of life at the those routine checkups. Um, lead is toxic to the brain and what it does is it can cause a lower IQ, developmental delays, behavioral problems, and lead has been linked to the development of ADHD. In this report by a House of Representatives committee, uh, arsenic and lead were both found in all the baby foods that they tested. So was mercury and cadmium. 
So what about mercury? If you're a fish eater, you probably already know there are concerns about mercury toxicity. The FDA has a report, particularly for children who are eating lots of fish, to watch out for fish that have high levels of mercury because mercury, mercury is a neurotoxin to the brain. Some research has shown that mercury is linked to autistic behaviors in preschoolers. Of those companies that submitted their data, um, some of them didn't even test for mercury, so we don't know if there are mercury in that baby food, but some of them did test for mercury, and of the ones that tested for mercury, mercury was there. Cadmium is the fourth heavy metal that was found, and cadmium gets into the soil uh, through the air and through rain, and it gets picked up into leafy vegetables and root vegetables and grains. So leafy vegetables, grains, and root vegetables seem to pick up the most cadmium. And we know that cadmium exposure is linked to ADHD and a lower IQ. So with all this new information, it can cause parents to panic, um, to really lose faith in baby food companies and what's out there for our children. So I want to go over a few tips um, as to what you can do if you have a baby and you're using baby food. So number one, the best defense you have against heavy metals in baby food is variety. So I preach variety anyways, because the name of the game in those first few years of life is to introduce a lot of different foods to your infant. And that actually not only helps build a flavor palette and a liking for a variety of foods, it also exposes your child to a whole bunch of nutrients. And guess what? It minimizes the exposure to heavy metals. So keeping the variety robust Introducing lots of different foods to your infant will help protect your baby from heavy metals and toxins. Secondly, I think you will want to substitute any rice-based products with other grains. So if you're doing iron fortified rice cereal, for example, switch it up. Um, it doesn't mean you can't ever do rice cereal, but I would like to see you doing more oat-based cereals or mixed grain cereals or barley cereals for your infant. The same goes for rice-based teething biscuits or puffs, switch it up. Look for um, quinoa puffs or millet puffs or wheat puffs or corn puffs. Try to switch up those grains so you reduce the exposure to rice, which has been found to have higher levels of arsenic in it. And of course, if you have an infant, the primary beverage in infancy should be breast milk or infant formula. So steer clear from rice milk. And if you have a child who's a toddler who might have a milk allergy or a soy allergy and has to use an alternative milk, still stay away from the rice milk. Go for something like a pea protein milk or an oat milk, which is going to have some more nutrition to it and also be lower in arsenic potentially. Thirdly, a lot of infants are getting introduced to juice early on. I say nay, move to water. Uh, again, as a reminder, formula, breast milk are the primary liquids of infancy. And if you're going to go beyond those two beverages, go for water. Juice should be way down on the list, uh, not only because we want to reduce any kind of exposure to toxins and heavy metals, keep juice to four ounces or less per day. Also, do not get stuck in the baby food stage. I think everybody forgets that baby food is a very short phase of infancy. Uh, you can start baby food around six months of age, but by eight, nine, ten months of age, you are getting your baby into more chopped foods, more family foods, and pureed foods, baby foods are really getting cut back. So don't get stuck on baby food. Move your child along into the different stages of eating so that A, you're helping your baby develop normally in terms of their eating skills and their flavor palette and all of that good stuff, but you're also minimizing exposure to any contaminants that might be existing in the baby food products that you're using. Choose safer baby food products. The Clean Label Project has conducted third-party studies on some baby foods who voluntarily submit themselves to be assessed and in their 
assessment and their analyzation, they are able to find companies who have safer baby food products. Companies like Once Upon a Farm, Serenity Kids, Sarah Belly, Fresh Bellies, and Tiny Human Food. They have a purity award attached to them from the Clean Label Project, so you can feel safer with those brands. And my last piece of advice is do not panic. Please don't panic. Uh, number one, baby food. 50 some years ago when I was a baby, today is much, much safer. Um, 20 years ago when I was feeding my own babies, it's probably much safer and more nutritious now than it was then. So we know more now, we have safer products now. Um, if you are thinking that you wanna make homemade baby food, Sure, you can do that, but remember, you're not gonna probably avoid some of the heavy metals that are found naturally in fresh fruits and vegetables anyways. Um, the benefit about baby food is it's been done in a sterile environment. They've been stored in a safe manner. Don't panic. There are lots of things that you can do to keep your baby safe. And for more information on what babies should be eating, head to my video about the new 2020 dietary guidelines for infants through two-year-old children. That's it, folks. I hope you found this to be beneficial. I have more information on my channel about child nutrition. I hope you go and explore all the different videos that I have. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do so right here. Uh, it will allow you to be alerted whenever I produce a new video. That's it for this week, folks. I'll see you next week. Bye.